Hello everyone, welcome to Best Boys Deep Dive, a passion project both literally and figuratively. Is that good? Take it one more time, you sound a little shaky at the beginning. Yeah, because I am shaky. It sounds like you, like, forgot to read it <laughs> for a second. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was, okay. <laughs> I was reading it. I like, hey everyone, welcome to Best Boys Deep Dive. And then I was, I was like, oh shit. I'm a little bit hungry. <laughs> what am I having for dinner? <laughs> I'm out of pizza rolls and I'm out of money. What am I going to do for dinner? <laughs> Eat your roommates. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, oh shit, uh, passion project. <laughs> <laughs> Why does Jesse, the biggest roommate, not simply eat the smaller of the two? <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to Best Boys Deep Dive, our passion project both literally and figuratively. I'm your host, Jesse. And I'm your co-host for today, Leo. Hell yeah. New I show. I, said that, I think I said that weird. I want to start... <laughs> Can we do it again? Oh, cool. Take three, I guess. I was, I was going to say just I'm your co-host, but I feel like it... I wanted to add, like, for this time specifically, mm -hmm. because we switch off. Yeah. So, let, let's take it again, just so we can establish that, and then we'll be good. Sorry. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Best Boys Deep Dive. Our passion... <laughs> what? You're laughing! <laughs> I'm not laughing. You're, like, smile laughing with your voice. <laughs> oh, my God. Fine. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Best Boys Deep Dive. Our passion Now you project. sound angry! Because <laughs> I am! <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to cut these in as bloopers yeah. at like the very end. That'd be fun. I really want to include these. Do it again. <laughs> Dance for me. <laughs> it's not so easy, is it? Yeah, especially when. <laughs> do I do this to you every show? Where like sometimes <laughs> you antagonize me. Yes. <laughs> Here you go, idiot. You take the reins. <laughs> you just you're trying to do the intro, but you have some fucking monkey dancing in front of you, <laughs> and you can't do anything. Oh. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> From the top. <laughs> Marker take six. Are you crossing yourself? No, I'm trying to like compose my. I'm doing the thing. Jesse that actors... has become Catholic. <laughs> no, I'm doing the thing that actors do, where they're like laughing and they go, <clears throat> you know. You gotta center yourself. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm centering myself. I'm trying to like keep myself to stop laughing because <laughs> you're being a bastard. <laughs> I'm full of the sillies today. <laughs> the bastard is coming from inside the house. <laughs> <laughs> the bastard is coming from inside the podcast. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? I legit don't know anymore. Okay. Oh no, you do have a case of the sillies. Get ready. This is gonna make my job easier because now. I <laughs> Cause I was you don't worried. have to try to be funny. Yeah, I was worried that like I was gonna like bore you because it's just me talking, like just monologuing about this movie for like two hours, <laughs> and then like I was worried like oh man he's gonna get tired or he's gonna get grumpy because he you know he he wants his time in the spotlight. I want to talk. Yeah, but like I think because you're feeling you're feeling frisky today. Oh, <laughs> trust me, I'm good at interrupting. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, let's take it from the top. All right. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> I keep thinking about all the times you're like, no, you now you sound angry. <laughs> <laughs> Just sound pleasant. I always sound pleasant. Prove it. Hey everyone, welcome to Best Boy Steep Dive, our passion project, both literally and figuratively. I'm your host Jesse, and I'm your co-host for today, Leo. Oh, thank God. <laughs> we finally got it on like it the seventh us, try it took us so many times to record that intro <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah today is going to be our pilot or first episode season premiere i suppose of best boys deep dive Yay. since we um are taking a little bit of a break from doing best boys in earnest because we have other shit that we want to talk about so we have a side project for it that we're gonna be focusing on a little bit more especially over the summer mm -hmm. um i think it's incredibly funny that right after we say hey the, the show's done for the season 
we immediately because we don't have anything to talk about we get things to talk about <laughs> yeah so cool news um uh jesse uploaded the season finale of um best boys today right or yesterday? yeah today today okay so just like an hour ago <laughs> from when we we're recording this yeah <laughs> so um we mentioned in that episode that we were going to go on hiatus because like neither of us really had studio classes and we didn't really have anything to talk about on the uh, podcast or like different projects that we were supposed to be working on uh however that has changed um we are talking to uh different people that we know about having guests on i think i'd like to do tyler as a guest for our first episode of season two mm-hmm. um i actually was waitlisted for a class and i got into like an actual 2d animation class that i've been trying to get into for like a couple of semesters now so i'm gonna have that and I'm also part of a going to be part of a narrative video class, so I'm going to have stuff to talk about there. And you said that you were working on something as well, right? Yeah, I'm working on a short film for my college's uh, film club. Oh, okay, that's cool. I yeah. remember that. I'm going to be uh, writing the screenplay. They want me to direct, but I don't think I can because that sounds stressful. Uh, so, but I I, I might come around on that well it remains to be seen yeah at the time of recording i am undecided but i am writing the screenplay (laughs) yeah Uh, that's still cool that's still something neat to talk about yeah also the um uh tyler's gonna be on as a guest as uh my head programmer for the um uh, dating sim that i'm still working on i've been uh, negligent because I have to come up with UI stuff like buttons and shit and I don't want to do that because it's boring but mm-hmm. I, I'm still working on it and Tyler and I will be discussing that at length on uh, the best boys episode that they are a guest on so mm-hmm. look forward to that That'll whenever be cool. that may be yeah but right now we're focusing on deep dive and mm-hmm. Jesse has brought a concept to the table for us to discuss at length well which is well real quick before we get to that i have something kind of interesting i wanted to share with you my friend oh, and gotcha, also okay. i guess the listeners so i wore leggings today uh, okay because i remembered oh i have leggings you remember you know that pile of clothes that i showed you <laughs> last night that was just sitting <laughs> on my bed you were like, man, I really wanted to go to sleep, but my bed looks like this. And I could just hear the, like, like, yeah. mind noise of just how cluttered and horrible your bed was. I'm like, I I can't look at this. I can hear this image. It's still there! I moved it back. Fantastic. It, it usually rests in my bungee chair. Uh, and that's where I sit uh, to watch netflix or play video games cool (laughs) so whenever i want to get into my bed i have to move all that shit into the bungee chair and if i want to sit in the bungee chair i have to move all that stuff to my bed and then when you get sick of it it is relocated to the floor (laughs) and then when i get sick of it i relocate it to on top of my head so it can crush me to death yeah i usually just stick it on the floor (laughs) well I don't have any floor <laughs> anymore. That's true. It's covered in have... other stuff. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> My life is in, in shambles. But you're also moving out of that uh, dorm in, like, less than a month. So, like, what's the fucking point? Yeah, it's 22 days. I'll manage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any, in any event, so I found... Leggings. Some, yeah, leggings. I found some, like, really cute leggings. And I was like, last night, and I was like, man... I'm, like, chilly because my roommates like to keep it, like, 63 degrees for some reason. Oh, my God. In the apartment. They like to keep it cold. Um, Tyler's not even that bad. Yeah. Tyler likes to freeze me out. Yeah, they like to keep it very chilly. Uh, So I like to bundle up and wear some pajama pants sometimes. And I was like, ooh, these leggings look cute. And then I put them on, and they're super comfy and really soft, and I love them. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to wear these to class tomorrow. And then I didn't go to class, but I met up with some friends at the library instead. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know you went to the library today. Yeah, I went to the library to hang out with a couple people in my class who also skipped. Uh, Sweet, okay. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I told you about it. That's where the one guy said that uh, his asshole was uh, Epcot Center. 
Yes, okay, I didn't realize that was, like, actually today. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> it was really That's funny. That's very funny. Lauren fell out of her chair laughing. <laughs> you texted me that when I was in class, and we were watching, like, kind of a sad documentary. Oh, no. And I was like, what? <laughs> it was really funny. Oopsies. It's okay. I, like, doodled the entire time we were watching the documentary, so it's not, like, a huge deal. That's true. Uh, anyway, so... I, uh, I got home around, like, 12-ish, and I took my leggings off so I could change it to some shorts because it's really hot out there because it's, like, you know, summer in Florida. Um, and I Barf. take my leggings off, and then there's something, like, black on, like, my thigh. And I'm like, huh, I guess it's, like, a, a piece of, like, felt or fabric or something. And so, like, I go to, like, touch it, and it, like, flies off to the wall. What? There was a fruit fly hanging out in my tights all day, Leo. All day. Oh, good lord. <laughs> there was a fruit fly. A, fr- a fly of the fruit variety. Just and it hanging was... out. Just hanging out near your grundle. Yeah, just just having a grand old time. Amongst your leg hairs. I just chilling. Just, you just... Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool, and it scared grundle. the shit out of me. Yeah, that's wild. The fact that it didn't die is like crazy. Cause you'd think it would be like crushed. You'd think, yeah, that it would be crushed or that it would suffocate or something. Or at the Evidently very, not. Or at the very least, that I would like feel it moving around and touching oh, up against my leg. That's horrible. But nothing, like nothing. I didn't know it was there. <laughs> It was so awful. Anyways, that's a that's a scary, spooky thing that happened to me. And speaking of scary and spooky <laughs> things, spooky is um a bit generous for the know. for the for the topic at hand. I don't know. Spooky is I think a spooky is a better way to put it than scary because this, this. I guess that's true. This thing we're talking about today is absolutely one of the least scary things I've seen in my life. Uh. Even as, like, a little kid watching this, I was like, this is the opposite of scary. But it's a little, rem- it's, it's a little spooky. I remember it being just straight up fucking boring. <laughs> We're talking about a little a little ditty from the 1980s called Scooby-Doo meets the Boo Brothers. <laughs> a One of the classic shaggy red shirt movies. I was gonna say, it's a, a, a classic staple of American cinema um, in that... It introduced the world to red shirt Shaggy. <laughs> uh, so for those not in the know, Shaggy wore a red shirt during the 80s. Uh, I tried to, like, I was genuinely like, curious as to, like, where this change came from. Yeah, because, like, like, it seems like just kind of a random design choice. It's a really weird departure, because, like, Shaggy is, like, pretty recognizable for, like, he's always worn the same thing. He wears, like, a green v-neck and, like you know b- brown bell bottoms and like black loafers and during the 13 ghosts of scooby-doo and these three movies um starting with boo brothers he swapped them out for like a red t-shirt blue jeans and like brown loafers really changing it up um so I Yeah, and like sometimes the the other characters get different outfits, but they're still the same colors. Like Daphne always wears purple and green and Velma always wears like orange, orange. and red. And so Fred like Fred always wears like blue and white and like a hint also of orange. Or- yeah, orange and like the ascot, but like nowhere else really. But yeah, it was a really weird departure and I tried to figure out like what the origin of it was, like I, w- I was thinking it might be, like, a, a situation like the Hulk in the comics. He used to be gray, but they couldn't print a consistent color of gray, so they changed it to green. Oh, okay. I actually um, didn't know that. That's cool. I was thinking maybe it's a similar situation where they could <laughs> they couldn't get a consistent color of green down anymore, <laughs> so they just watched it, they switched it off red. I yeah. <laughs> but actually... Because, like, the, the way that animation was done was that the, um, the shit was, like, painted onto, like clear film and then overlaid on top of backgrounds so i don't know if, if that's how it was done back then but whenever i see like documentaries about like the making of like old disney movies or whatever it's usually done on these clear sheets of plastic and then mm-hmm. overlaid on top of 
backgrounds and then switched out one after another. So, like, and, like, they're painted frame by frame, so they have to make sure that they have the colors exact. So the fact that they, like, ran out or, like, couldn't mix or whatever the appropriate color is, like, entirely possible depending on the manner in which the, the movies were made. Here's the thing. I looked Here's the up, thing. I looked up the actual reason. Uh, it's way less interesting than that. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Yeah, it, it's just because it, it's been, you know, 15 or so years since they started Scooby-Doo. They wanted to change the characters up a little bit like design wise so like if you've ever seen daphne from like that era she looks so weird she has like like long straight hair and like gem and the hologram style bangs and like a like a purple denim jacket it's... oh that's what she looks like in uh cyber chase right no she looks no? like like kind of she's wearing like a purple blazer and like a green shirt uh like huh. a green tank top but, like, she looks super weird. I'll, like, send you a picture of, like, Daphne from the 80s. Because <laughs> it's a it's a real sight to behold. 80s Daphne sounds yeah. very cool. But um, <laughs> I'm expecting it to not be a great outfit. <laughs> it's, look, uh, if memory serves, expe- it's a bit I'm of a disaster. I'm expecting the look to be challenging at best. Uh, it's, it's not as, oh, no. <laughs> I forgot it was a jumpsuit. <laughs> Oh, no! It's an April O'Neil-style jumpsuit, but it's purple. Oh, fantastic. Maybe they were, like... Oh, weird. Yeah, she has, like, really heavy bangs. Her hair's, like, fluffy. My mom's hair used to look like that. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. The, The mix of jumpsuit, like, bangs, like, really, like, like frizzy hair almost and heels is just a lot of look i don't mind like from here up but the fact that it's a jumpsuit is just strange (laughs) yeah like i think her hair is cute to be honest i i like the way that she's drawn and like i like the way that her hair is like styled but the outfit is just not great yeah i definitely don't remember it looking that terrible apparently in like some versions it is more of like it's a, a sort of like just a shirt i'll like send it to you now uh so the reason that they changed the character design was just like to shake things up pretty much yeah Um, lame yeah (laughs) but it is like interesting that i don't know shaggy's like but yeah like you said uh daphne is still wearing like purple and pink and whatever but shaggy's like central color is completely decidedly absent. not yeah it, like the green is just bye-bye maybe they wanted to get away from green because it's like no he's not a stoner we promise <laughs> maybe even might... though he like 100 percent is maybe that is an element of it um it's also important to note that this movie does heavily feature <clears throat> the one and only scrapper to do I forgot he was in this movie. Oh, shit. Yeah. I uh, hate him so much. Here's the thing. When I was a kid, I didn't hate Scrappy. I didn't really hate him until, like, the the live-action movie. Because he was... Which is... You were supposed to hate you're him. You were supposed to hate him. Because, like, James Gunn hated him. And he wrote him to be hateable. James Gunn wanted... Made sure that the audience hated Scrappy. Uh-huh. Tim Curry was gonna play the villain in that movie. Uh, but he turned it down because he found out that Scrappy was going to be in it. And he That's hated so Scrappy. That's so funny. He's like a big Scooby-Doo fan, but he was like, fuck that. I don't want to be involved in Scrappy-Doo bullshit. Fuck um, that entirely. But here's the thing. I hadn't seen any, like, Scrappy stuff um, until, like, watching this movie again for this. Yeah. And I gotta say... Yeah, he's the worst. He He fucking sucks, right? He sucks. He's so annoying. And and it's completely... It's not even just the voice. It's just the entire personality of him is like... He's like really egocentric, isn't he? That's like his thing. Kind of. He's really... I mean, he's supposed to be like the brash and brave one. Like, he'll go in to like fight a ghost or whatever. Which could be an interesting character. Especially considering he's, you know... uh, Really small. And he's Scooby's nephew. 
So, like, he's related to, like, the biggest coward in the show, aside from maybe Shaggy. Um, But, like, make him this brave guy. That could be, like, an interesting little subversion of expectations. Yeah, like, I feel like Scrappy could be an interesting character, but he just fucking sucks. But, like, one of the first things he says in this movie is, Did you say haunted? Oh, boy! Like, he gets excited that, like they might die at this place. He's just this weird adrenaline junkie who just (laughs) hangs out with them. Everybody's like, let's decidedly not go to this haunted place. And Scrappy's like, fuck you, we're going! (laughs) He's like, at one point I think he he tells Shaggy like, oh, I hope we see see a real ghost. And Shaggy says, don't talk like that, Scrappy. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) It's really funny. Um... (laughs) But yeah, the characterizations in this movie... Where I'm skipping ahead a little bit. The characterizations in this movie are all wrong. <laughs> really? Like, Shaggy's kind of a dick. Is he? <laughs> he's kind of, like, just angry and mean. Like, like That's he's, so funny. It's weird. It's. Have you ever seen the Scooby-Doo Project? Yes! Well, it's, they're all just, like, super mean to each other for no be- reason. Because it's a parody of the Blair Witch Project where everyone's, like, you know, kind of a little bit jokey and sarcastic and hostile with each other. And then and they then turn it, really hostile with each other because they go crazy in the woods. Yeah, it gets real because they're under a lot of stress. That, it makes sense why their characterization was like that. But, but it it's is still incredibly like... bizarre to see the Scooby-Doo characters being yeah, mean to each mean. other. It's like, so weird, and it feels very wrong and like, I, I feel think like daphne was doing something like you know girly or whatever and velma like flipped out on her it was like sounds about right i was like no these people are friends oh my yeah. god i think there's a bit where fred's like velma put the camera down velma put the camera down <laughs> it's Jesus. Like weird hearing fred be angry with anyone it's, it's frank welker just losing his mind in a <laughs> studio booth <laughs> But yeah, so like, Shaggy's just kind of like weird and hostile. So like, th- there's a bit early on where like he's. So, I'm I'm, I'm jumping all over the place because this movie just boggles my mind on multiple levels. This um, movie seems to jump all over the place. <laughs> it, we'll get there. Uh, so I I found this out doing some research on this movie because. Uh, even when I was a kid, I was like, I liked this movie a lot when I was a little kid. Um, I know you didn't. <laughs> I thought it was really boring. I, yeah. I tried watching it one time on a car ride, which probably wasn't like the best mm-hmm. way to enjoy this film. But I remember watching it and just like nothing happens. I'm going to date myself a little bit by saying this, uh, but I rented it a, a lot from Blockbuster when I was a kid. And I would just yeah. watch that shit like all the time. Like it was... It, it was up there with, like, Land Before Time 2 as, like, one of the movies I would just put in and just press play and just re-watch it over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Um, I watched a lot of Scooby-Doo, um, fuck. It was the surfing one where they were in Hawaii. Oh, Aloha Scooby-Doo. Yeah, I watched that one a lot. Yeah, that one's good, too. Um, so, even, but even when I was a kid, I liked this movie a lot. But even then, I was like, this movie's weird. Like, there's just something kind of just... There's just something a bit odd about it. Like, there's always just a little something that's just not quite right. And I, I don't know if it's just, like, the red shirt or all of Yeah, the... I was about to say, it's it's just the fact that Shaggy has a red shirt. You're just or like, why? Or if it's the characterization or the, the constant dangling plot threads that go nowhere, of which there are so many. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but I, I, I was looking into it. So this movie was... Made for television in 1987, it was a part of uh, what apparently is called the Hanna-Barbera Superstars 10, which is a series of 10 made-for-television films uh, to be released in syndication that were made and released between, get this, fall 1987 and fall 1988. Oh my god, so just just one year. One year, 10 movies. To make ten movies. To oh make my god. Ten movies. And I have a list of the movies. <laughs> oh thank God. <laughs> if you want to hear I knew about... I could count on you. <laughs> Yogi Bear's Great Escape. Scooby Doo Meets the Boo Brothers, which is the one we're talking about today. 
the Jetsons meet the Flintstones, Yogi Bear and the magical flight of the Spruce Goose, Top Cat and the Beverly Hills Cats, The Good, the Bad, <laughs> and the Huckleberry Hound. <laughs> Which That's is interesting. dumb. Which is interesting. You'd think they would have gone with Quick Draw McGraw instead of Huckleberry Hound for, like, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly parody. That's true, yeah. Like, that's a that's an interesting choice. Rockin' with Judy Jetson, which I, I haven't seen. I can only assume it's, like, a jazzercise, like, it's one of those, like, jazzercise classes on videotape. But, like, But with it's, Judy Jetson? But with just Judy Jetson. I really hope that's what it is. <laughs> I doubt it, but... I really hope. What is it just called? Rockin' with Judy Jens- Jetson. Oh, good lord. Because, like, like, it really oh, does imply like that. <laughs> it prob- it's probably, like, the most sexist movie in the fucking world. Maybe. It probably is. It, maybe it's, like, Hanna-Barbera's take on Gem and the Holograms. Because I think that was Filmation, which is kind of, like, the, the back alley Hanna-Barbera. <laughs> it definitely it definitely <laughs> seems like a, uh, it, it looks like a Josie and the Pussycats kind of situation. I just looked it up. Which it is looks- also interesting, because Hanna Barbera have Josie and the Pussycats. Yeah, just make a movie about them. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Maybe they lost the, the box rights? art looks cute, huh. but yeah, I have no idea. That's really funny. So, uh, the last three were Scooby Doo and the Ghoul School. Scooby Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf released just one month apart. Oh no! And <laughs> my favorite title. Of any movie ever in the known universe. Yogi Bear and the Invasion of the Space Bears. <laughs> <laughs> and if you look hey, up oh, above... It's the end of days. <laughs> <laughs> if you look up the box art for that one, it's literally just like Yogi Bear facing down a bunch of other Yogi Bears. <laughs> they all look the same as him. Are they like are they like green and that's it? No. No, <laughs> not still even brown. <laughs> they're just regular ass brown bears. It's just hell, oh, they're from they're from space, boo boo. <laughs> I oh, knew no. this would happen. <laughs> Get in the bunker. <laughs> Shit, okay, so Rockin' with Judy Jetson is directly followed by Scooby Doo and the Ghoul School. Yeah. Interesting, okay. Mm-hmm. They have so, musical numbers. Oh, good. <laughs> There's one called Gleep Glorp. <laughs> Gleep Glorp. Okay, I'm not going to take over this by talking about rocking with Holy Judy Jetson. Shit. Please continue. I think we both have to watch that one for Oh for, yeah. <laughs> just to clarify for those at home, I'm going to do an episode on every single one of these movies. Oh good lord. <laughs> I have Hey a... Leo, we're back in the saddle. Please make it stop. <laughs> we're back in We're back in the saddle. Time for Good the Bad and the Huckleberry Hound. <laughs> <laughs> blow my fucking brains out <laughs> oh so get ready for those at some point uh i i just to clarify these these aren't gonna happen anytime soon uh please i i i, <laughs> I need a mental break because <laughs> i had to watch boo brothers like three times <laughs> to <laughs> jot down the notes like in its entirety and I'm gonna also, have to I'm watch. I'm gonna it. do a fucking Moomin episode. <laughs> Give yeah. me some time. <laughs> anyway, so this movie opens in one of the most bizarre ways I've ever seen a movie open. It opens with sort of a musical number that is not followed by any other musical numbers of. June Foray, famous legendary voice actress June Foray, the voice of Granny from Looney Tunes and oh, okay. Rocky from Rocky and Bullwinkle, uh, the original voice of Magicka Dispel from DuckTales. Oh shit, okay. Yeah, she's voicing this ghost witch who's terrorizing Scooby and Shaggy and chases them out of their home and then she's like, and then the musical number continues, and she's like, oh, and I'm, a, I'm afraid of the Boo Brothers. And she's, like, listing off all the ways of how scary the Boo Brothers are. And when we eventually meet these fuckers, <laughs> they're not even scary in the slightest. Spoiler alert. Oh, um, I never would have guessed. 
<laughs> why they're why they're so unscary that they themselves might just be a little bit scared <laughs> themselves. I thought you were going to say they're so unscary that they have a musical number about it. <laughs> no, there are no other musical numbers in this entire movie. Oh, great! <laughs> that one's a flute. Also, the stuff with this witch never is mentioned in the movie. It's never addressed. It's it's She never comes back. She's not even credited <laughs> during the credits. So I can only assume... <laughs> That this was, like, written and recorded when there was, like, a different storyline going on. And, like, where the Boo Brothers were going to be, like, scary. And where this witch was going to be, like, a central antagonist or whatever. And they just, like, cut cut it in half or whatever. And just made it way sillier and dumber. And they just left it in. Because they already finished the animation. That seems like it would have been a better movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or at least, like, a little bit more competent of a movie. Maybe. So, there's... Also, the fact that this is a... Uh, this was made for television. Made for syndication uh, television. There's a lot of abrupt commercial breaks. And there's always, like, a sort of cliffhanger. Um, <laughs> there's always a cl- little cliffhanger before we go to the commercial break. And then when we come back, the, com- the cliffhanger is very quickly disposed of. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what will they do? They're about to fall off a cliff in the mystery machine. What will they do? Just and then it reverse. Yeah, <laughs> just reverse the, the car. <laughs> or or they're about to like fall off the cliff and they're falling. And then at the bottom of a cliff, there's like a, a a soft mattress. And they're like, oh gee, it sure is good that there's a mattress down here. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> it's like that was pointless. Who you who just are all of the characters? In this movie. Like, is it the entire mystery gang? No, it is just... I didn't think so. It is just Scooby, Shaggy, and Scrappy. Okay. Are the only, like, original, like, franchisable characters. Hey, so I realized something. Mm Mm-hmm. I thought... Cool, cool mid-episode realization. Uh Uh-huh. I thought Scooby-Doo and the Boo Brothers was the same movie as Ghoul School. Oh, no. In that case, I've never seen this movie. Oh, really? Ever. So I will say, Ghoul School from memory is upsettingly more boring than this one. I remember it being just so fucking boring. I was yeah. like, I, I want to like these characters because they're cute. Like They have they had such cameo- great designs. Yeah. yeah, they had cameos in OKKO. OK That's like super neat. They're yeah. adorable their little, little characters. Yeah, and their characters are so good in OKKO. OK and like, it's, they're just wasted in like ghoul school which we will get to another day um i like i remember seeing the box art and being like oh these are cute little characters i want to learn more about them and they're so fun and they're so adorable so boring the movie's so boring nothing happens it's mostly about volleyball (laughs) what the fuck (laughs) yeah it's mostly about volleyball don't remember that i don't even think god i have no idea how old i was when i watched this movie i like don't think that like i think i was an only child at this point Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's like that's how young I was when I saw this movie. <laughs> uh, so everything I'm gonna say is gonna be a complete surprise for you, which is, yeah, makes me very I, excited. I probably like will not watch this movie, so I don't give a shit about oh, spoilers. That's, that's fair. Yeah, I, <laughs> if you were gonna spoiler have a, alert, the Boo if you Brothers. were gonna have a problem with spoilers, we were gonna have a bit of an issue. <laughs> Some spoiler because like, Shaggy fucking dies. Because this is like a full plot synopsis, like beat by beat. <laughs> oh lord, I'm glad yeah. you have two pages of notes to go off of rather than just trying to recall it. <laughs> oh no, I wouldn't be able to because like there's, I'll watch this movie and I'll I'll be like, oh fuck, there was a bear or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> there was, was like a, there a, a bear. Grizzly, there was a grizzly bear at one point. Why? <laughs> You'll be saying that a lot <laughs> during uh, this episode. <laughs> I'm gonna just settle in. Yeah, um, oh, strap in, grab your popcorn, and <laughs> get cozy. I've got my sketchbook in front of me. I'm gonna be doodling throughout this whole thing. Here we uh, go. <laughs> yeah, so after the, the June Foray number, we, like, hard cut to uh, Shaggy and uh, Scooby and Scrappy driving down this road. Apparently, uh, Shaggy's... Uncle Beauregard just passed away, uh, and he's going to go inherit the family plantation. So, it's kind of left ambiguous, like, 
what Cur- what the, what the, the Mr. Beauregard, Colonel Beauregard, was Mr. The... Wasn't he like a Confederate yes. soldier, like descendant or some shit? He is a Confederate soldier. He's like a a colonel. Colonel. <laughs> colonel. <laughs> you, I'm trying like... to be racist, but the Union. <laughs> I mean, there's no direct reference to, like, the Civil War. Like, there are a lot of direct references to the Civil War and Confederacy in, uh, Zombie Island. Shaggy uh, has blood money. Oh, my God. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Why did he have to be a Confederate that colonel? That's the worst. Because they wanted to have all these fun Southern stereotypes. <laughs> of which there are many in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, like, uh, Casey Kasem as Shaggy has a little bit of a southern accent. I guess, like, yeah, a that's A slight true. one, so they wanted to just A bit of a of twang. That, I guess. Yeah. And whatever he says, like, why, why, he always says it like, why, like with the hard H. Yeah, I had a teacher that did that. He would say, <laughs> yeah. what? It was what? like a, it was like a Q almost. It was like, like, what? Like, what are you doing, Scoob? <laughs> what? <laughs> um... So yeah, it's it's never directly said that like he's like a colonel from the Civil War, but like he definitely is. The way he dresses and like the he, he has like a sword, like he's definitely like from the, the way he talks about seceding from the Union <laughs> and family <laughs> gatherings. <laughs> but here's the thing: so presumably this movie would have taken place in the '80s, or at the very least in like the '60s when Scooby Doo began. But yeah, that the would make civil, sense. The Civil War ended in, like, 1865. Yeah. <laughs> so if this dude was a colonel, he would have had to have at least been, like, at least, at the very least, 20. Which means this dude would have been, like, 120 at the very least. Yeah, this dude is just super old. <laughs> He's just super old, just holding on to life with his undying racism. <laughs> He survives through sheer willpower and also racism. <laughs> Fuck this guy. I'm glad he died. Yeah, well, here's the thing. He comes back. Ooh. Oh, shit, he's a racist ghost. <laughs> the 13 racist ghosts of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, So there's, <clears throat> there's this bit where, like, they're trying to find... Uh, the way onto Beauregard Road. Because they even straight up named the road after this dude. This huh. racist, horrible man. Which I guess is, like, realistic to, like, you know, modern day. Since we have, like, fucking monuments dedicated That's to fair, the Confederacy. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's this weird bit where, like, Shaggy, like, crashes his truck. Because it's not the mystery machine. He, he just drives truck? like it, He just drives, like, a little green truck. <laughs> They took the green off his shirt and stuck it on his truck. (laughs) Yeah, I guess so. It's very weird that he just has, like, a truck. I don't know, it's it's odd. It's, like, one of those, like, hatchback trucks, I think. Huh, okay. It's interesting. It, like, it kind of fits his character. But by the time we roll around to, like, ghoul school, he has, like, a red van. Or, like, a bus or a microbus. I don't know. (laughs) Shaggy has, like, a side hustle where he takes cars, fixes them up, and then resells them. I guess, yeah. Um, Tyler and I had a co-worker that did that. He owned, like, three cars at a time at one point. Damn. Yeah. Um, so Shaggy, like, crashes the truck, and Scooby somehow ends up under the hood. And Shaggy asks him, well, how'd you get under there? And Scooby goes, search me. Which is something they say a couple times in the movie. Yeah. As sort of a way of, like, either they need, like, a character to say something so they have them answer a question with, search me, or they just want to, like, eh, don't think about it. <laughs> they need some sort of plot contrivance, because un- while under the hood, they lose the map. Like, the the map to Beauregard Plantation, it, like, just disintegrates. While, because Scooby goes under the hood... And the only way we can get him under the hood is if he just get, gets there. How does he get there? It doesn't matter. Search me. <laughs> Search me. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> and then Shaggy says, now we're really lost. How could it get any worse? 
Search me. <laughs> and Scooby says, it could be raining. And Leo, <laughs> I want you to take a wild stab in the dark. What happens next? It rains, but blood, specifically. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were... You hit the nail right on the head, and then the hammer came up and hit you on the head. Cool. <laughs> no, I got doinked. It, yeah, you got doinked by the hammer uh, of truth. <laughs> the hammer. It begins of truth. to rain. <laughs> it begins to rain. Yeah, and they're driving, and Scooby sees a gorilla <laughs> in the road, but Shaggy and Scrappy don't, and they they. There's just a gorilla. <laughs> so is Scooby, it Shaggy driving? Yeah, he's driving, but he doesn't see the giant gorilla in the road. I mean, I rear-ended somebody not too long ago. It happens to the best of us, Shaggy. But you you would notice a big blue gorilla going oh, up to... Oh, it's blue! It's a big blue gorilla going up to the window, go, going up to the windshield, going booga booga booga. Ooga booga. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. So Scooby gets scared and, like, jumps into the driver's seat and starts driving. And so... We're Shaggy! He, no, he's, like, driving... Scooby, like, sits on him and, like... Oh, on his lap. Okay, like, I thought he, like, yeah. pushed him out of the car or something. <laughs> GTA 5 it. <laughs> Tyler's been playing a lot of that, so I've just been like, man, this Trevor sure is a character. <laughs> oh, yeah. That That's something, yeah. That fucking guy. <laughs> y- yeah, I don't... He's either a bicon or he's horrible. <laughs> He seems just horrible. I mean, he is horrible no matter what, but, you know, it's a whole situation. And I'm not talking about the situation from Jersey Shore. (laughs) Anyway. Shut the uh, fuck up and keep talking about (laughs) Scooby-Doo. So, uh, because they're driving erratically, because, of course, the dog is driving, uh, it alerts uh, this cop who's just on this road. Isn't it mysterious that the cop would be on this lone road that only leads to the plantation? Hmm. A little mysterious, don't you think? I have no idea where this is supposed to be going. Anyway, so his name is Sheriff Busby, and he's the only good character in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> of, like, the, of like the original characters they introduced in this movie, he's like the only funny one. <laughs> Like the, um, at, at the very least, the only one who is given funny things to do, who is actually funny. Um, so I appreciate him for that. And uh, he he warns Shaggy, oh, you, you don't want to go up to the Beauregard Plantation. That place is sure enough haunted. We could cut this. We could cut this from the podcast. But I looked up a picture of this clown, and like I already know he's the bad guy. I already know he's the ghost. What do you mean? He's got a must. He's got a fake mustache in one picture and like not in any of the others. I'm like, oh, okay, so he's the ghost. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll we'll get to that. <laughs> we can cut that, but no, I I think that's funny. But yeah, that. I don't There's want to twi- spoil Scooby Doo and the Boo Brothers. Oh, believe me, there there are far more t- twists and turns. <laughs> That you won't possibly anticipate. Oh, I, like, didn't know what the Boo Brothers even looked like until just now. They're kind of (laughs) cute. They're, like, stupid looking. (laughs) Yeah. They're basically... Well, we'll get to their influences. They're... It's... They're a lot. (laughs) Um... I can, like, hear what these guys sound like in my head. Oh. (laughs) I don't know if you can. Do they just have... Okay. Sorry. Yeah. We're getting ahead of ourselves. So... So, Rob Paulson is in this movie twice. He is Fuck one of yeah. the Boo Brothers. Of course he is. He's the, is he the little skinny one? He's the little skinny one, yeah. Yes, I knew it! <laughs> He's also the voice of the dispatch uh, on Sheriff Busby's car. Um, and <laughs> He's like the radio voice? Yeah, and he, <laughs> he has like a funny little southern drawl. 
And oh, I don't great. know, hearing Rob Paulson with, like, a southern drawl is really funny. Because he's just <laughs> on the other end going, Colin Sheriff Busby. Colin Sheriff Busby. <laughs> I like Rob Paulson. He's got he's... just, like, a nice voice for shit. Oh, he's uh, fantastic. And I'm always like, oh, hey, it's Peck from back at the barnyard. That really is, like, the first thing you think of. Honestly, when you that's, think the of first, Rob that's, the, that's the first thing I, like, saw that I knew it was him. Mm, okay. It, looking back, I'd be like, oh, yeah, that was Rob Paulson. But that's the first yeah. one that I knew, like, oh, this is this voice actor. This is what he sounds like. So I attribute that character to, like, the way that he sounds. Okay. Kind of like but... how kind of like how Jeff Glenn Bennett, to me, will always be Prowl from Transformers Animated. Mm, but he was okay. also, like, Johnny Bravo and shit. Yeah. I know him best as the experiment Slick from Lilo and Stitch, Jeff Glenn Bennett. Slick? Hmm, Slug. not a fan of that. Yeah, well, well, we'll, we'll get to that in another episode. <laughs> Sludge. I, I am I am going to make you guess the, the abilities of every experiment from Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> in a fun Get me off game. of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is episode one and I already want to quit. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fun. We're going to have fun together. It'll be great. So... They get up to the the plantation, and they are accosted by the ghost of General Beauregard, some sort of wolf, and also a headless horseman with, like, a pumpkin that is clearly supposed to be the head. Yeah. Uh, the whole, the whole shebang. Um, and they, they get spooked, the car, the truck stalls, because I gotta remember, it's a truck. Uh, oh yeah, it is a truck, huh? And they run into the the mansion, and they are <laughs> they're greeted by by uh, the the colonel's uh, manservant because that's the way they put it, not butler, manservant, cabin boy. <laughs> and guess what this clown's name is? Oh, fantastic! I can't wait. Farquard. Like the character from Shrek, but with an extra R. It's not Farquad, it's Farquard. That's not a name. <laughs> Nobody in the history of anything has been named that. I just think it's so weird, because, like, Farquad in Shrek is obviously supposed to be based on Jeffrey Katzenberg. Or no, he's supposed to be based on, like... He's a based on somebody. Person. He was like he's a director, a, right? He's or, based. He's someone who was a higher up at Disney. He might be Bob Iger or Michael Eisner. I think he's Michael Eisner. That sounds familiar. I feel like I read about this, I but it was like Michael, some douchebag, right? No, I think Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was like a creative head at DreamWorks, <laughs> who left Pixar. I think he's the asshole. I think he's the bastard. The bastard hole. The bastard hole. Um. Uh, but, like, th- they named him Farquad as, like, sort of a play on fuckwad. Fuckwad, yeah. Yeah, but th- the idea that they named this character in a movie, like, 13 years prior, Farquad, which is so similar. Yeah, that is really weird. I think that's a really weird coincidence. Um, <laughs> but yeah, also, but just the fact that, like, he's a manservant, and he's, like, this, he's very clearly, like, based on Igor, from like yeah. Frankenstein, he's got like a hunched back, and he's always he's he's always like he's got his like little is he like velocir- wringing his hands all the he's, time? And yeah, he's, like, he's yes. always got like his little like velociraptor hands. Like, <laughs> does he um, have just like an aura of grease? Yeah, his voice is very greasy. He's like, oh hello, <laughs> I'm Farquaad. Welcome to the ha- ca- welcome to the Colonel's mansion. <laughs> I feel like I would like this character. He sounds like kind of funny, actually. <laughs> He's like, I don't know if they if they gave him like a better looking if they made him a better looking character and had him voiced by like Vincent Price or whatever, he would be like so like very fun and gay, and he'd be like. Like, he would be, like, gay icon, but he's just this horrible-looking little man. He looks like fucking Elton John. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I didn't even peg that, but you're kind of right. <laughs> you're kind of a little bit right. He's got, like, darker hair, obviously, but, like, the haircut and the sunglasses and the suit. He looks like fucking Elton John. 
Except for, he looks like Elton John mixed with Igor from the movie Igor. Yeah. God, that sure was a movie. Or like Quasimodo or whatever. It's so weird. Um, but Farquaad is important to the story because he, I'm just going to call him Farquaad because it's easier than Farquaad. Yeah, fuck it, Farquaad. <laughs> so Farquaad tells them uh, about the Beauregard Bonanza because the colonel... Can what? I interrupt you for a second? Uh-huh. I just looked up Igor because I remembered that that movie existed. Yeah. These designs for the characters are, like, pretty good. Yeah. Like, Igor's cute. He's got, like, these big doofy eyes and, like, a cute, like, nose and, like, yeah. fucked up hair. He's, like, interesting looking. Damn. Mm-hmm. I'm sure this movie isn't actually that good, but I'm, like, kind of digging. Steve Buscemi was a suicidal rabbit in that yeah, one. Yeah, I'm seeing the rabbit. Yeah, he was an immortal rabbit who was very, like, wanted to kill himself. <laughs> That's so funny! It's so weird for a kid's movie. It's it's hilarious, but it's very weird for, like, a kid's movie. I'm sure the movie isn't good, but I would be interested in watching it again. Yeah. We'll anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Um, maybe. Um, but yeah, so... The, the, cur- the late colonel has hidden has hidden treasure across the the mansion and plantation area uh and in a way to hide it from his enemies but it's weird because he's leaving it all to shaggy anyway so shouldn't he be able to just get the treasure from like you know the will or whatever that is weird yeah like he got the mansion Why can't he get all the treasure along with it? Why does he have to go on a bullshit little scavenger hunt to, like, get his inheritance? That is weird. Just for fun. Yeah, just for funsies. Just Um, for- just for laughs. Yeah. Uh, so, Busby shows up, uh, because he wants to let everyone know that there's been in a- like, there's been a breakout at the on a circus train. A gorilla has gone missing. Uh, which we already know because we saw the gorilla earlier. We sure did, Good against our better judgment. Yeah, here's the thing. Farquhar tells him a different story, that it's not an escaped circus ape. It's a ghost! <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's great. the way he says it. And <laughs> Busby gets really scared by that. He goes, oh, like he kind of like jumps a little bit when he says ghost. He's a a, it's a ghost of a gorilla? It's never... <laughs> so, Busby said it's a gorilla that escaped the circus. Farquhar says it's a ghost of a gorilla that the colonel got on a hunting trip. And, like, is shot and stuffed. Which leads to one of the best jokes in the movie, which is Busby, like, draws a gun on, like, the, the taxidermy gorilla. <laughs> and he says, like, put your hands up. Or whatever, and Farquhar says, he can't do it, Colonel, he's stuffed. And he says, I don't care how much he eats. <laughs> That's the best joke in the movie, huh? It's not the best joke, it's one of the best. It's like top five. I think it's a funny little joke. I think it's cute. Man, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks just real bad. <laughs> I think it's a funny little joke. I think it's a good <laughs> little goof. I do not. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, so Farquhar says it's a ghost of that gorilla while Busby says it's a real ass gorilla and it's never stated clearly in the movie whether which story is true because like clearly like Farquhar has some sort of history with a ghost gorilla or else he wouldn't be talking about that but also like Busby's just like ah don't listen to him he's crazy so like who fucking knows it's all, like, completely up in the air, and ne- nothing is ever explained. I mean, that doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they try to leave because they're like, N- no, 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 no. <laughs> We're not staying in this fucking haunted mansion just so we can get some treasure on a plantation. We're out of here. And they walk out, and the, the truck is sinking into the, into the mud. Oh, of course. And... <laughs> And they start, like, trying to, like... Uh, but then Shaggy starts sinking, too, into the mud while he's trying to get the, the truck out. And they all 
Scooby and Scrappy rush over to help him, and Farquaad just goes like, "Oh, good, they'll all, they'll all die here, so I can get the inheritance or whatever." Like he's just oh my kind god, of like, he just says that, huh? Yeah, he's just low key out loud wishing death upon these people. It's really weird. <laughs> um, they don't die, but the uh, because they have to like stay the night at the mansion anyway, um, because you know their truck is gone and they can't get out uh <laughs> when they're going to bed and they see one of the funniest images in the movie unintentionally it's oh great Cur- the ghost of colonel beauregard riding on one of those like old timey bicycles with like the one really big wheel oh, and the God. little tiny wheel on the back he's just riding it <laughs> through like the bedroom with his sword drawn yelling at them to get out of here <laughs> That's so funny. If it was, like, just this dude with a sword yelling at them to leave, that's, like, that could be scary. But on a bicycle? On a little bicycle. And it's not even, like, a regular bicycle. It's, like, and one, one of those, those like, big, doofy ones, no From, like, less. the turn of the century. Yeah. Like, <laughs> 1910s <laughs> big just bike. just so goofy looking. <laughs> and here's the thing. The funniest part of that is it shows up again later in the movie. <laughs> him on the bicycle is a recurring thing. It was his favorite. It was it his was favorite, favorite bike. <laughs> but is it a ghost bike, I I guess? <laughs> when bikes rust apart, they become ghosts. <laughs> oh my god. Um so uh they realize, well, we're gonna have to stay here anyway. Let's try and get rid of some of these ghosts. So Scrappy gets the idea of let's call a ghost exterminator. And we are introduced to the Boo Brothers, who are ghosts themselves. Because, as one of them puts it, it takes a ghost to catch a ghost. But here's the thing. I'm gonna be honest, I totally forgot that these Booed Brothers were even in the movie. Here's the thing. That won't be the first- that won't be the last time you forget that they're in this movie. Oh, fantastic! (laughs) Because, like I said, there's so many dangling plot threads that go nowhere in this movie. The Boo Brothers are one of them. They just kind of... They're in the title! Yeah, they're They're in the title! title! I I have this written down. I have this written down. They are the most... They are probably the most pointless characters in the story. And they are three-fourths of the title. That's so funny. Um, And here's, here's the thing. Their their name, the Boo Brothers, is very clearly, like, a goof on the Blues Brothers. Like, the SNL characters who had their movie just a few years before this movie came out. And the fact that they're, go- that they're ghost hunters is kind of Ghostbusters, which is also kind of referenced in the movie. You see, like, the Ghostbusters symbol. Um, yeah, I would have imagined you- that that would have been a pretty, uh... Pretty obvious reference, I suppose, that they'd be pulling from. Yeah, so you would think that they would be, like, kind of goofs on, like, the Ghostbusters or the Blues Brothers or something, but instead, their personalities are based on the Three three Stooges. Stooges, yeah. And their voices are, like, brash New Yorkers. Like, they're like, oh, hey, Mac, come on, we gotta gotta go hunt some ghosts. (laughs) And it's just... It's just a clusterfuck of, like, what exactly was the inspiration for these characters. Weren't these exact characters in that one, um, like, Mickey, Donald, and Goofy short that we watched? Yeah, kind of. It's like those exact ghosts. And they also seem like they are based on, or they seem similar to, if not based on, uh, Casper's, like, uncles. Kind of, yeah. So there's the... There's the leader, who he's Frico. There's the goofy one, who's voiced by Rob Paulson. He's, like, the class clown, and he's Shrieko. And there's the chubby one, who's a bit of a fraidy cat, and his name is Miko. And look, they are... I, I audibly groaned the first time that these characters showed up. Because, <laughs> like... <laughs> they they just, just suck, suck so bad. They, they suck, suck the moon <laughs> right out of the sky. Like, it's just... I, I I don't know. I I know I've seen some fan art of people who from people who really like these dudes on like DeviantArt. 
I know these guys have like a fandom. I fucking hate them. I think they're so annoying. They have a fandom. What kind? Yeah, well, kind is it of like. Well, is it like weird DeviantArt fetish art, or is it like? It's mostly like people on DeviantArt drawing like their self inserts in MS Paint, hanging out with the Boo Brothers. <laughs> You know the type. <laughs> you know the type. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I'm going to take a break from what I'm drawing, and I'm going to do that exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll come back to you with what I have. So Shaggy obviously is like pretty reluctant to hire these ghosts to hunt ghosts. Because the last thing they need in a house full of ghosts is more ghosts. And Frico goes like, oh, no, 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 you, you just need some, you just need a, a demonstration of, like, how good we are at catching ghosts. And so what begins is the most pointless chase scene in the history of chase scenes. It's, they, they get, like, a toy ghost, a demonstrator ghost. A toy ghost? It's a toy ghost. They wind him up. He goes, boom! and he like flies around the house and the boo brothers try to like chase him down and what, what <laughs> yeah he's dummy thick found that on google images <laughs> yeah <laughs> what leo just did is sent me uh, a picture of sheriff busby with like his he's kind of crouched down with his butt jutting out <laughs> they like Definitely drew in, like, an ass-crack line on his pants. They sure did. Interesting. <laughs> it was uh, some artistic liberties. Yeah. We're gonna make this dude thick. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, they have this, like, toy ghost running around the house. And as a way to prove to Scooby and Shaggy that, like, no, we can catch ghosts... And they can't even catch the toy ghost. So these really are, like, fucking pointless characters. And you would think that that would lead Shaggy and Scooby to just say, like, okay, you guys are useless, get out of here. But they don't. They don't say anything, they just kind of, like, fly off. And we just kind of keep cutting back to them throughout the movie of, like, oh, what are they up to now? Like, oh, here's some fun little pranks they're getting up to, or whatever. They don't even, like, hang out with the rest of the gang? No, they do. They hang out with the rest of the gang sometimes. Usually, to, like, play a little prank on them. Or, like, say, oh, we almost caught the ghost, but, oh, we're, we're getting close. Oh, we're you need some help? We, you need some help? Well, too bad. Or whatever. <laughs> There's a little bit of that. Um, and then the, the chase scene becomes a dance scene. It's the second most out-of-nowhere dance scene in the movie. Second because there's another most. one. Oh, There's fantastic. another one later. Um, the the demonstrator ghost just stops and puts on, like, a, pho a phonogram or whatever and starts, like, dancing along to the song. And it's here that we're introduced to... Also, the gorilla comes back and starts dancing with Scooby. The, gor the gorilla wants to fuck Scooby. Uh, oh, okay. Gay rights. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're introduced to another character at this point. Uh, Sadie Mae Scroggins. Uh, Fantastic. Who is the neighbor who came over to borrow some molasses. Which is, I guess... I guess that's, it's what people think happens in the South. Is that neighbors come by to get some molasses? That's really funny. I don't know about you, but I've never had molasses in my life. I don't know if that's like a Southern stereotype or if that's like an actual thing. I've never had molasses. I barely know what it even is. <laughs> All I know is it's sticky. Yeah, and It's, like, like, sticky and goopy. I had a kindergarten teacher that uh, would insult <laughs> me and my fellow students saying that we were slower than molasses in the wintertime, which is great to tell five-year-olds. Yeah. Cool. Fuck Yikes. you, Miss Magnotti. Just by the way, eat shit. <laughs> Damn. Miss Magnotti was a bitch. She was so mean to me, and I was five years old. Yeah, I believe it. Anyway. Uh, anyway. So, Sadie Mae, which, uh, also a very stereotypical name. She she also has, like, she's barefoot, and she has, like, 
her shirt is like all torn up so like her like midriff is all out like she's really clearly like like a hillbilly girl and like she's hot for shaggy like she sees shaggy and she's like oh he's cute and i can't not fuck him i can't not fuck him and shaggy's so not into her because he's gay (laughs) (laughs) he's just like he's just like ew yuck don't kiss me or whatever (laughs) which also that could be a thing because like you know ask for consent first yeah that's fair but also like shaggy's gay Mm mm-hmm so he runs away and jumps into a bush, and he's greeted then by Sadie Mae's brother, Billy Bob Scroggins. <laughs> and he is also a hillbilly stereotype. He's got like a... Who's also like, hot for Shaggy. No. <laughs> he's got like big drawn out lips, and he talks in a thick southern drawl, and he's got like a little like shitty hat... And he, he's also barefoot. Why are they all barefoot? It's just weird. Because they're southern. I guess. Do hillbillies not have shoes? I'm currently not wearing shoes, and I live in the south, so... I mean, me neither, but, like, is that a thing of rednecks? They just don't have shoes? But I anyway, don't know. Uh, uh, he says, like, oh, no, I'm not trespassing. I'm j- I live here. I inherited the place from my Uncle Beauregard. And... Billy Bob says, wait, you're a Beauregard? You mean the family that we've been feuding with for a hundred years? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and Sadie Mae says, I think he's darn cute, and I intend to marry him. So she's gonna take Shaggy's hand in marriage, even though, one, he's not interested, and two, you just met the guy a second ago. At least Disney movies, like, they have a the montage of, they have a montage it, it takes course over like a day or so at least they like have like it takes an hour on screen for them to fall in love it takes it takes sadie may one whole dance with shaggy to want to marry this dude and jump his bones oh no <laughs> uh also this is something that i don't think would fly today there's a lot of guns in this movie. Oh, shit. <laughs> Mostly for Billy Bob. He just carries around, like, 50 shotguns. They keep getting destroyed by other characters, but he definitely has multiple shotguns that he points at Shaggy frequently throughout the movie, and it's oh, really no. <laughs> Like, right in his face. <laughs> I just remembered something else, but we'll have to save it for later. We'll have to save it for later. Say your prayers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, also, it's worth noting, going back to the uh, the Beauregard Bonanza storyline, uh, which is somehow the main plot thread of this movie, is we gotta find the family jewels, which is how they put it every single time they refer to the treasure is they refer to it as the family jewels. They refer to it as the, the, the nut shot. <laughs> so, they, so they start looking around for the family jewels. <laughs> and they find, they find a couple, they go outside, they meet the gorilla again, and then there's another encounter with Billy Bob and Sheriff Busby. And Shaggy almost gets shot again. Yeah, and then <laughs> Billy Bob shoots Busby's hat off of his head and because he's aiming for Shaggy or whatever. And <laughs> Billy Bob, Busby says some, like, pretty funny things. This is why I like him as a character. He says some, like, good, he has some good lines towards Billy Bob in particularly this scene <laughs> because he shoots, like, the the hat off of his head and he says, like, oh, that's it, Billy Bob Scroggins. You got yourself a citation. <laughs> <laughs> and he, starts, he pulls out, like, a little note card. <laughs> to, like, a little notepad to <laughs> write down a ticket in. He's like, guess what, idiot? <laughs> and I'm Billy gonna Bob, write like, a piece of paper at you. Billy Bob keeps shooting at Shaggy. He shoots out, like, the police, like, the flashing siren light on uh, Busby's car. And he says, oh, that about does it, Billy Bob. You got yourself two tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Do, I feel like some of this sounds familiar. I might have seen this movie, but it Maybe, was probably yeah. so so long ago. 
Yeah. <laughs> Just entirely too long ago. Yeah. Uh, so, you remember in Scooby-Doo, you've seen Scooby-Doo, uh, the, like, the ghost designs are, like, really, like, unique and clever, and you'll, you, you see, there, there's never, like, a ghost you see more than once. Like, I think they only did, like, the, it's just a ghost with, like, a white sheet, or whatever, like, yeah. they, only, they only did that, like, once. Um, but every other time it's, like, a weird glowing green scuba diver, or yeah, like... Yeah, that one was really cool looking. Or, like, an orange 10,000 volt ghost, or, like, a werewolf ghost, or whatever. Like, there's a lot of, like, unique designs. So one of the main ghosts in this movie is a skeleton with, like, a cape. And it's... And it's not, like, a good... It's not, like, a just straight up, like, a skeleton. It's very clearly, like, someone in a skeleton suit because it has, like, the black outline around the bones. Oh, okay. So, like, it's very clearly someone in a suit, but no one at any point goes, that's a guy in a suit, until later when they start having s- suspects. But, yeah, like, it's a very, I feel, lazy design of, like, the skeleton ghost... Or the skull ghost, as they call him. I feel uh, like the idea of an entity or any sort of character design that's just a skeleton in a cape is something that I would very much be into. But, yeah, it does seem kind of lazy compared to some of the other shit that they've done. Yeah, you've been in... And also, like, the whole, like, Headless Horseman thing with, like, the pumpkin in his arm. We've seen that. That's, like, every rendition of the Headless Horseman. Yeah. Like, Scooby-Doo has done so many different designs it's weird that they would go with such a like a kind of a boring take on the headless horseman um ultimately like, the coolest looking ghost in the movie is probably beauregard even though he's I riding around pic- on a bicycle i saw a picture of him he's like pretty cool looking yeah he looks like i mean he looks kind of like red beard from the original show but like with a gray beard and swap out the pirate suit for like a confederate uniform but like it's it's decent. It like gets the job done. It's better than the skull ghost. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, God, there's so many notes. <laughs> Jesus, we've been recording. I've been recording for like almost an hour and a half already. <laughs> I started recording when we actually started like doing the podcast. Yeah, it ha- it's been like an hour and twenty minutes. Okay, fantastic. Okay, yeah, same over here. <laughs> um, while we're not in the middle of a discussion, I sent you. <laughs> The drawing I did of me hanging out with the Boo Brothers. <laughs> That's really funny. I'm a little ghost. <laughs> you went ghost. Like Danny Phantom. I'm Mr. Danny the Phantom. Oh, you screenshot it. That's funny. Yeah, I want to save that for later. It's evidence against you. Oh, great. You have so much bullshit that you could hold against me. Yeah, <laughs> so many drawings of Donald and Daffy fucking. There was not a single dick on screen. It's implied. It's an implied <laughs> dick. Anyway, so I I feel like here's a here's a scene where we have like another edition of everyone's just kind of mean, which is weird for these yeah. characters. So, uh, the skull ghost like spooks everyone, and Scrappy like scares them off. And then he, because I, I bet you probably you might have forgotten Scrappy's in this movie because I haven't mentioned him yet. Uh, he's solving like all of the, at every like scene of the the treasure, or the family jewels. <laughs> there's like a little riddle instructing them of where the family jewels will be hidden next. And Sh- Scrappy is always the one to solve the riddle and figure out like what it means. Like oh this means we have to like go to the chimney or oh this means we have to like go out to the porch or whatever but it's always scrappy which i think is weird i think maybe that's the reason that they like make it so he's not pointless (laughs) they wanted to give him something to do i guess yeah but it's interesting that they made him more useful to the story than scooby or the boo brothers (laughs) yeah the boo brothers that are in the fucking title also, like, the, the name Scooby-Doo meets the Boo Brothers is kind of a presumptuous title. Because, like, the they last time they did, the like... They hired the Boo Brothers. Well, yeah, well, like... The other the only other time I could think of that, like, Scooby-Doo has met someone is, like, Scooby-Doo meets Batman. Batman, yeah. <laughs> Which is, like... Okay, that's a crossover that, like, would be exciting for someone who's, you know, 
maybe you've never seen Scooby Doo before, but ooh, Batman, he's meeting Batman. Let's see what that's about. Who the fuck is but, Batman? <laughs> <laughs> but like, who the fuck are the Boo Brothers? They've never shown up in anything before this, and they haven't shown up in anything after. Even the kids from like Ghoul School show up in like OKKO. OK decades like, later, these, but yeah, <laughs> decades later, but still, like, there's nothing to the Boo Brothers. It's weird that like the title is named "They Meet the Boo Brothers." Like, it's exciting, you know. Um, I just think it's weird. Um, in any event, um, they, uh, so Scrappy scares off the skull ghost, um, and he finds, like, a, he hears something coming from the piano, and he goes, like, oh, okay, I bet the skull ghost is hiding in there, and he, like, starts jumping around on the piano keys to, like, make a lot of noise, and then out pops shaggy and scooby and they're like ow jesus that that's so loud what the hell scrappy <laughs> or whatever <laughs> they, they cuss yeah they, they cuss say now. shit <laughs> scooby says fuck <laughs> scooby Rock. meets the boo brothers and also says <laughs> swears and so they're and so Scrappy's like, oh, gee, I'm sorry, guys. I thought you were the ghost or whatever. And Shaggy goes, well, we're not. And look, you even broke this key on the on the keyboard or whatever. Like, they're just being, like, really angry at him oh my for, God. Like, making a mistake. He <laughs> even really apologized. Weird. I kind of feel bad for Scrappy in this scenario, I suppose. Yeah, it's weird. Like, they're very hostile, and it, it feels really, like, not in character. They're... We'll get to that. Anyway, um, so they press down this one piano key that's broken, and it leads them to, like, this dark, like, a secret passageway, and then the door closes behind them, and they're trapped in this dark room, and then this, like, glowing head of, like, the glowing disembodied head of this ghost shows up, and it's, like, snarling and, like, dripping like saliva it's like really spooky and that sounds scary yeah holy shit yeah it's like holy shit and it goes to commercial it's like oh one of these like oh a little cliffhanger a little something exciting how how are they gonna get out of this one and when it come we come back from commercial the ghost has like the same little like hat on his head that shrieko has so it's so the joke so the the scare is ruined because we know, oh, well, they're not in any danger. It's just Shrieko being a dick. Um, and they... I don't know. It's just weird. Uh, then Shrieko uh, help, tries to help them read the riddle off of the page by doing his impression of a headlight, which means he turns his head into a light bulb. This is just a power he has. And it's never addressed later. He could just turn his head into a light bulb. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's so weird. These are abominations before God. <laughs> also, Scooby is literally so stupid. He thinks that he can go through, like, a wall because the ghosts can. So he just, like, runs straight into it? Yeah, and someone's like... And I think uh, Frico is like, no, you goof, you're you're not a ghost. Only ghosts can do that, or whatever. And it's like, yeah, how Scooby not know that? He's been solving mysteries involving ghosts for like fifteen years. Yeah, <laughs> what is this? Scooby Doo meets the Brew Brothers is actually the lost story of Scooby's first day on the job. <laughs> Scooby's origin story. I guess, yeah. Oh, oh, run, too stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Scooby says, stupid rights. Stupid rights. <laughs> Thank you, Shaggy, Shaggy says, stoner rights. Yeah, God. Um, so, Shrieko goes through to, like, hit the piano key. But then he just starts playing the piano, like a little, like, fucking Beethoven 7th or whatever. And, like, it, that scene really so drives home how much this movie is spent wasting time. Yeah. Like, so much... Like, it's kind of like what you said about Ghoul School, but, like, it also applies to this movie. So much nothing happens. Just nothing fucking happens! Yeah, there's almost... N there's so much story that there's ultimately no story. Because <laughs> nothing connects. Yeah, really, God. There's another encounter with the Skull Ghost and Scrappy bites on to the ghost's cape 
And Shaggy says, and I quote, Don't do that, Scrappy. It's bad luck to bite a ghost. <laughs> what are the laws of this realm? <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, I watched this movie like maybe a year or so ago by myself. And then immediately like a week later, I was like, I went to my partner at the time and I said, yo, you got to watch this movie. <laughs> and we watched it together. Please while we were, like, suffer with me. We were like super tired. I watched it with, with them. And when that line came up, they turned to me and they said, it's bad luck to bite a ghost. And I was like, fuck, that's such a weird line. Like, when you're, like, actually, when you think about it, because for the rest of this movie, you kind of have to turn your brain off and yeah, just I not can think about anything. But when you actually, like, sit down and think about some of the stuff in this movie, it just... I don't know what kind of drugs <laughs> the people involved with this movie were on. I feel I don't... so bad for the animators that had to make ten of these things in a year. Yeah, that God. sucks. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's the same like team of animators i assume it probably is because hannah Barbera makes these like on the cheap yeah but like if that's the case that really sucks because that's just inexcusable yeah that's wild that's like and there should be labor ex- laws against that goodness gracious it would also explain why the animation looks like that <laughs> <laughs> that's fair yeah because it's not very good it really i don't know it's some of it looks like it's the original cells from the original show just kind of painted over with like new colors yeah but other times it's very clearly new animation and it's really weird there's one shot where like shaggy's head is so much smaller than his body and it's (laughs) really disorienting that sounds really funny there's a bit where frico's voice comes out of shriko's mouth and because you're you're supposed to be used to okay that's the Rob Paulson one hearing a voice that is decidedly un Rob Paulson Ooh. coming out of his mouth is very strange. That does sound very funny, especially because like yeah. Rob Paulson characters all you can tell when you they're going to be. Him. That's why because um in Mickey's House of Mouse the uh the three caballeros have an episode and rob paulson voices one of them which one do you mm-hmm. think it is like just going off of characters i do you actually know the answer to this question i don't know if i know the answer i'm guessing panchito exactly he's yeah. not he voices jose really exactly like rob paulson characters are like longer like th- he's either thin he's thinner, either like really long and skinny or like really short and stout because i also think like uh pj from uh goof troop or carl from uh jimmy neutron that's true yeah i didn't even think of that yeah he, yeah it's either round or like really elongated characters yeah like uh um, peck i'm gonna come back to that but peck and also yeah. like he's a rooster so that like I guess feeds into my perception that he should have voiced Panchito. Neither, he shouldn't have voiced yeah. either of them because he's white. But anyway. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, what else did he do? Oh, Donatello in uh, the oh yeah 2012 Ninja Turtles. He's like slightly taller. He's like a little like... Yeah, they have, he's like, like I think maybe the tallest. I think so. He's definitely like thinner than the other ones. It's either him or Raphael I think is the tallest. I think Raph is actually short in that one, which is really cute. That might be true. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you might be right. I think Raphael might be the shortest. Um, but anyway, also, it's what's interesting, spoilers, I guess, for the ending of this movie. So Farquhar has, like, a lot of, like, potential motive for, like, why he could be the ghost. Because, like, the colonel was supposed to leave him the the Beauregard bonanza and then he didn't so he's like vengeful against shaggy and like that's a pretty decent motivation and also he's a creepy dude who clearly he straight up said earlier on he wishes they were dead yeah he's like what if you guys die how funny (laughs) ha 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 here's the thing he's not the it's not not him yeah the villains except one of the ghosts i think the skull ghost is voiced by the same person who voices farquhar (laughs) And here's the thing, it's not Farquhar. 
or if it is it's never established in canon whether or not it is so it's completely ambiguous so it's really strange that that's the case um and also they don't give him like some sort of like oh they don't, there's not even like a fake out really he's just like that through the whole movie and then like oh no it's probably this other guy um but yeah it's, it's red it's, herring it's red herring there was that one episode where it was red herring i think we've talked about that yeah before. yeah yeah <laughs> um so at one point uh there's a there's a scuffle between Beauregard's ghost and the Boo Brothers. There's a little bit of a fight, um, but it doesn't really go anywhere, and there's no real winner. Um, but at one point, there's there's some interesting lines exchanged. Uh, Frico at one point uh, does some sort of launch at Beauregard, and he says, how do you like that pain in the neck, you pain of the neck? <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. Uh, Beauregard's ghost says, Fools of a feather stick together, and I'm going to stick you all. Threatening them with his sword. But okay. Like, that's a... <laughs> I don't think that works. Like, fools of a feather, like, is already kind of a stretch. And then I'm going to stick you. Like, like they stick together, but I'm going to stick you. Like, that. None of it really works. Yeah, like, We get the that. gist, but it, it just doesn't quite add up. It's sort of a... It's too much of a reach for it to be, like, a successful joke. Yeah. Um, So, there's another manufactured cliffhanger ending uh, for the commercials. Uh, They're in the the cellar, and they they find a a clue, and they turn around, and there's a cannon rolling towards them. And they're like, oh no, what's this, what's going on here? Is one of the ghosts pushing the cannon towards us? And it goes to commercial. And when we come back from commercial, out from the cannon comes Shrieko. Again, it's <laughs> the, the same Rob Paulson thing. Joke. It's the same it's the same cliffhanger again of it's just Shrieko doing a dumb prank. And it again goes nowhere. And it's nothing. <laughs> it's weird that they use sort of basically the same thing twice. Um so anyway, they have to go to the cemetery to find... Because, of course, there's a cemetery. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, they have to go to the cemetery to find the next clue. And they're like, oh, I haven't heard from Billy Bob in a while. <laughs> it's a good thing he's not out here. And then Billy Bob's, like, just right behind them with his gun drawn. <laughs> with a gun? Yeah, like he's I just said, like, he has a, Yeah, I know, he just still has the gun. Yeah, well, so the gun keeps being destroyed by characters like Sadie, Sally, Sadie Mae, Sadie Mae will, like, break the gun in half or whatever. Damn, or, like, so you could just snap it in half? Or the gorilla will, uh, because the gorilla's still about. Oh, yeah, that's um, a thing. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, like, it, it seems like it's a really bendy gun. Like, it'll just, like, kind of bend like a... Like, one of those long erasers, you know? Oh, yeah. You ever have one of those long erasers that you can just, like, flop around like a dildo? <laughs> anyway. Like a big old floppy dick. <laughs> anyway. And Shaggy says... Now, Scooby says, what a drip. But because... Scooby has a lot of lines in this movie that are immediately repeated by Shaggy because they're worried that the audience won't understand what Scooby's saying. Oh, that's funny. Okay. So Scooby will say, run a drip. (laughs) And Shaggy will say, yeah, that guy is a drip. And Billy Bob says, who were y'all calling a drip? (laughs) God, so they just repeat the line like 50 times. (laughs) But, like, I will... It's kind of interesting to, to hear, like, the word drip used in that context. Because I don't think it's the only time we hear that word used in, like, an insulting way in this movie. I guess that's, like, of its... I guess it's, like, very 80s, like, insult. I guess, yeah. It sounds vaguely familiar, but it doesn't... Like... Hearing it you're in such context... You're a drip. Yeah, hearing it in context... Leo, you're like, a drip. I guess. It doesn't do anything <laughs> for me. It doesn't make me go, like, oh, sick burn. It's just, like... 
What? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> it's so weird. It just makes you think of a leaky faucet. Um, there's another great uh, encounter with Bubsy, Busby and Billy Bob, uh, where <laughs> Billy Bob accidentally shoots the tire off of Busby's car. And he says, you just violated the vehicular code. <laughs> what? <laughs> he just keeps saying this shit to Billy Bob, like, ooh, I'm so angry at you. And they, they clearly know each other, like, they have some sort of history. And I genuinely wish the movie was just about them. <laughs> They're really funny. That is really funny. You just violated um, the vehicular code. <laughs> If it weren't uh, for the laws of this land, I would have slaughtered you. <laughs> so, there's a really weird exchange here. So they go back to, th- they get back in the cemetery, and they are chased by the skull ghost, and they fall into a big, like, square hole in the ground. And the ghost tells them, now, Give me the treasure, or I'll... And he, like, pauses a little bit, and Scrappy says, Or you'll do what? And the ghost goes, Oh, get me out of here! And he runs. Like, he has them cornered. What? And then he goes, Oh, I'm scared! And he leaves. And it's... It's so weird and out of nowhere. And I think what... because I think they're... Because it's shown a little bit after that, like, maybe a minute later, the gorilla shows up. I guess it's he saw the gorilla, but we don't see him see the gorilla. We just see him go, oh, I'm scared now. Oh, okay. That's... But it's still really weird, especially, like, in the moment, like, as it's happening. And if you don't know the gorilla's coming, you're just like, what? But he has them. <laughs> so, Scrappy gets out of the gets out of the hole i can't remember how it doesn't matter anyway he goes to any fucking way yeah he goes to go get help from busby there but scooby and shaggy are in the hole trying to read the the next clue and the gorilla rocks up and he sees what I just counted how many pages in my sketchbook have been taken up with drawing Donald and Daffy. How many? I want you to guess. Is it t- is it more than ten? No. Okay, seven? No. Eight? No. Nine? Nine. <laughs> I'm having fun! <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you are. You can, like, see the drawings get better, too. It's fucking wild. I'm getting so much beak practice. Let's work on the phrase beak practice. (laughs) (laughs) Let's workshop that a little. (laughs) So the gorilla rocks up to the hole that Shaggy and Scooby are in, and he looks down and he sees Scooby... And he reaches down and, like, pets Scooby on the head. And Scooby goes, like, ooh. And he looks at Shaggy because he thinks it's Shaggy. And he, like, pets Shaggy on the head. And it's like, mm. And Shaggy's like, cut it out. Stop. I'm trying to read this clue. And Scooby's just like. And he gets pet again by the gorilla. And he just does the same thing again to Shaggy. And Shaggy's like, knock it off, Scoob. What the hell? (laughs) He's just giving Shaggy some fuck me eyes. (laughs) <laughs> why <laughs> it's a really weird bit that is really strange <laughs> it's so funny but for all of the reasons that i don't think they wanted it to be yeah it's just so weird <laughs> and then the gorilla pulls on scooby's ear <laughs> which makes him realize oh it's not it's not shaggy <laughs> but like it's just this gorilla is weirdly horny for scooby and Scooby's sort of horny for Shaggy in this scene. Yeah, it's, that's weird. That's definitely the kind all, of vibe I was getting. It's all very strange. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so, <laughs> this is another great exchange that makes no sense. Um, uh, Busby is on the, the, is on the 
radio communicator whatever thing with the mayor and buzzfeed's like oh mr mayor how are you how's the missus the wife the kid the dog the family (laughs) okay and the mayor says never mind the corn syrup rufus (laughs) what (laughs) what is it Never mind the corn syrup, Rufus. What the fuck does that mean? I think... I think this is a stretch, but I think it might be, like, stop trying to, like, be sweet and butter me up, maybe? I guess? Or maybe it's just, like, none of that matters. Have you found the gorilla yet, basically? Yeah. And Busby says, don't worry, I'll find that animule. Dumb aminals. (laughs) <laughs> Aminu- Amin- animule animules animules um but then we get what i genuinely think is the best joke in the movie oh great um, i can't wait which is shaggy scooby and scrappy are walking back to the mansion uh i forgot scrappy and... was in this <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know who I, who else i forgot was in this movie the boo brothers <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so they're walking back to the mansion and Shaggy goes like and they're like, What? And he's like, Oh, I, I just thought I heard like someone walking behind us like uh like it was that crazy girl or Billy Bob or whatever and he's like, Oh, don't be silly, it's totally fine, they're not around like and they're like, Oh, okay and they just keep on walking and we see this like full minute sequence of Shaggy walking just like casually through the woods just talking to himself like yeah you know no I just gotta keep telling myself like you know it's all in my head and I just gotta stay positive like no one's out to get me I'm just I'm just losing it out here you know it's all it's all in my head I'm just kind of going a little crazy out here I mean I know that no one's about to get me and he's just keeps talking like that okay and behind him we keep seeing billy bob with his rifle drawn just with a gun following him that's so funny and then sadie may will like grab him and pull him down and like and like take his place following shaggy and he'll like pull her down and take her place and it'll just keep like they'll just keep swapping each other out for this like full minute of shaggy just monologuing about how like no one's behind me it's all in my head (laughs) i don't know it's one of those jokes that like it really works in context because it's just the full it's like just the full minute and it just keeps getting more ridiculous as it goes on it does sound like a good bit i feel like if i saw it i think it'd be actually pretty funny yeah there's like a a full like the full clip of it is on youtube if like anyone wants to like check that out it's really funny it's like (laughs) it's ultimately like the only really good bit in this movie are you looking it up i am yeah i want to watch it we (laughs) can like edit it obviously but i do yeah for sure oh okay walk back to the house i see it oh yeah that's the one i'm being sold mattresses fantastic i'm being sold uh google phones cool Damn, that took uh, a really long time, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was funny, and then it just got not funny. <laughs> Cause it oh, just... really? I think it... I personally think it gets funnier, like, the longer it goes on. After, to a point, it starts getting, like, Ugh, okay. Mm, okay, yeah. <sighs> the sound effects is... are very fun. Yeah, I, I really like the score in the movie. Like, the music is really good. Also, Billy Bob's design is fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. He has, like, really big, like, long, jutted-out lips. Uh, um, Sally May or Sadie May is, like, significantly more attractive than him. It's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> and she's blonde. <laughs> but, yeah. Also, sometimes, like, I, I feel like this is a real testament to, like, the animation in the movie. Sometimes the Boo Brothers are, like, transparent Sometimes they're, like, translucent, and sometimes they're, like... They're just completely, white? Completely... Yeah, they're just plain white. So, like, it's really inconsistent. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would have imagined that. It's, like... It's, like, one of the most inconsistent things in the movie. But the fact that it's not even clearly the most is, like, telling. Even by Hanna-Barbera standards, I think. Um, 
also uh shaggy tells the boo brothers that they give failure a bad name oh my god which is kind of true <laughs> um shaggy at one point says yucko sloppo when he falls into some mud uh which <laughs> i'm so glad you wrote that down <laughs> look someone has to acknowledge it um so at this point in the movie they find the uh the the headless horseman and his horse and it's just a dummy on an animatronic horse and they go oh okay well that solves that mystery and then scooby while like goofing around on the horse accidentally activates it and it starts on down the road and it like starts chasing after busby and busby says push the button doggone it push the button push the button so he knows and how to operate it he knows how to operate it's basically revealed at this point that busby is the villain yeah <laughs> it's like in no short term like there's there's no like subversion of expectations of like oh well maybe he just made the horse but he didn't know how it like got there or no he's he's just the bad guy he's just the bad guy <laughs> he's just the bad guy and it's revealed to the audience with like like 20 or 30 minutes to spare <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not a great mystery we'll say it's not um, a great movie <laughs> there's another bit where scrappy psychoanalyzes the gorilla <laughs> where the gorilla is following is following the gang and then the gang runs away, run away because they know it's the gorilla and scrappy's just left and he goes you know, I feel sorry for the gorilla. He's probably scared of the dark, and it's, like, spooky out, and all these ghosts, and all the shooting and whatever, and being chased down by the mean old sheriff and whatever. And the gorilla's like, yeah, you're right. I do feel these things. <laughs> and it's it's a weird it's a weird little moment that also goes nowhere. Also, it's worth noting, because I don't think I wrote it down as it happened, uh, but they... G the conclusion of the gorilla's arc is they give him the horse to like ride around on as like uh like just a fun little thing i'm glad that the uh the gorilla was able to complete its arc <sighs> because billy bob sadie may and farquhar don't get to <laughs> they all die <laughs> no <laughs> i was about to say what <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? That would be so funny. <laughs> it would be the first Scooby-Doo movie to involve murder. <laughs> um, yeah, most of the crimes so, are usually, like, property schemes or, like, fraud yeah, or whatever. Yeah, we're trying to, like, take the insurance money. We're trying to embezzle something or we're making counterfeit dollars or we're trying to steal priceless artifacts from a museum. It's always something financial. Yeah, it's usually a financial gain. It's never like we gotta, t <laughs> we never, we gotta take down the ghost of the hitman. <laughs> yeah, I guess before he he he, he, he completes his list of uh, his list of targets, he will kill again unless we stop him. <laughs> Could you imagine? Like it? Zoink Scoob. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if Buggy Mystery Inc. took on like a serial bomber? Oh my god, <laughs> the Mystery <laughs> Gang takes down ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> they take off the like the hood. It's like who's behind the mask? Oh, good lord! Oh my god! Oh, it's just a guy. Okay. <laughs> they take off like the mask of like a KKK member, and they're like David Duke, <laughs> the mayor of this small town. Damn, that sucks. <laughs> Yikes! Um, so. Uh, they they find a well that they need to go down um, and to get the clue. And they're like, oh, well, this is what the clue uh, was leading to. And Scrappy figured that out. And Shaggy and Scooby are like, uh, or Shaggy's like, how'd you get to be so good at like solving riddles, Scrappy? And Scrappy says, from my Uncle Scooby. Oh. And Scooby's like, yeah. He figured he learned that from me. And but it's isn't like Scooby, nice like, moment. super dumb in this movie? So He's it... so dumb, and he solves none of the riddles. He contributes nothing. So why is it that if he can solve riddles, why doesn't he? Why is it always Scrappy? 
He just wants to make him feel important. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, I guess. I don't know. I just thought it was weird. That um, is weird, yeah. Yeah, it's just a weird little thing. But the, there's like 50 weird things about this movie. Um, they they go underground uh, and they find the they find the truck which is now being remote controlled uh but it's fine they get rid of their remote control Beauregard's ghost uh in sets up some booby traps and then he tells them I'm springing the booby traps you boobs yeah I figured that was gonna come yeah. up at some point also, this is all I think it might be funnier than Beauregard on the bicycle <laughs> so they're underground in no the caves. such thing Beauregard's ghost is now on a giant bulldozer underground, hurtling towards the the gang. <laughs> He's just, just a giant orange bulldozer, like something out of Bob the Builder, cool. just barreling towards them <laughs> in these fucking caves. Oh my god. Or no, no, they haven't... No, the, the truck thing happens later. That's my mistake. Spoilers. Oh, uh, yeah. They get the truck later You're in a different You're ruining the cave. chronology of this cinematic I'm sorry. masterpiece. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so they get back to the mansion, and they're like, well, now that Beauregard's trapped down there, I think we're finally rid of the ghosts. And they go into the lobby, and the place is full of ghosts. And they're all dancing to some music. The Boo Brothers invited the whole family to a party. <laughs> Instead of, you know, fighting ghosts, which is what they were hired to do. Did they pay these clowns? They sort of do later. We'll get to it. Oh, great. Okay. Um, I was wondering if the Boo Brothers would face financial compensation <laughs> for all their hard work. They weren't paid in advance. They weren't paid in advance, thankfully. Oh, but they are... They're paid very generously for their uh, contributions to the film. Um, uh, so, uh, the second that they realize that, because the, the Boo Brothers are like, yeah, here's some food for, from the party. It's like scary dip or whatever. <laughs> it's like scary chips and dip. S spooky Totino's pizza rolls. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yuck, this is nasty. Everyone get out. Like, that's when they decide to cancel the party because they realize the food's gross. Oh my god. Like. Shaggy and Scooby are like, no, fuck this, everyone out. <laughs> and, like, the entire, like, Boo family leave, except for the brothers. And Shaggy says, and that means you nerds, too, hit the road. He calls them nerds. That's so funny! <laughs> it's hilarious. But then, oh, but then Leo. Oh. Oh, Jesse. Leo, we, what is we it? have to get the Boo brothers' tragic backstory. <laughs> <laughs> but jesse i don't want to get at the the boo brothers tragic backstory leo they're orphans oh. no mutter no fodder <laughs> even though they just had their entire extended family <laughs> hanging out at this party they're orphans no mutter no fodder and they they're trying to like did rob paulson this... say mutter and fodder no it was frico i think damn it yeah <laughs> but he does like <laughs> they're all they like take off their hats and show off their like weird ghost hair yeah <laughs> um and like <laughs> and they're explaining that like they they're trying to like do these like ghost hunting gigs to like try and save up for their own spooky place to haunt um and it, their their backstory is so heartbreaking that it moves the gang to tears <laughs> they're all just crying at, like how touching this story is <laughs> i for one am not moved <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> because, look, you would think that, like, if this if there were such big stakes to this job, that they would do the job. <laughs> yeah, they've just been, like, fucking around doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, they've just been putzing around this mansion for, like, the past hour doing nothing, <laughs> except for, like, playing some fun little pranks on Shaggy 
and like and offering, throwing um, a party, offering scare, scary dip and chips. What was oh offering a uh, cliffhanger? Offering, oh yeah, uh, a, no, to a couple cliffhangers. <laughs> Shriko specifically offered many cliffhangers. Oh no, Shriko. Shriko's Shriko, the Rob right. Paulson character. You're right. You're right. Frico, Frico is the leader of the bunch who doesn't doesn't take any of the the other brothers as nonsense he's the one with a round nose right yeah he's the one with the round nose with like the the sort of a cowboy Just hat, a weird hat yeah and it's a fedora almost miko has the backwards cap right yeah he has the baseball hat he's big that and also dumb. yeah uh also that baseball hat holds like a bunch of items including the demonstrator ghost and like a frying pan and an anvil or whatever cool it's just yeah. It's like Mary Poppins. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> but their story is so heartbreaking that they, like, hired the Boo Brothers back on um, with the bravado that, like, they actually, like, do their job. Yeah. <laughs> do the job that they're hired to do. I mean... And they're like, okay, let's do it. That's <laughs> not like, that's, unreasonable. That's the convincing they need. Uh... It, uh, Shaggy then says after they leave that it takes real talent to be as dumb as those guys. Oh my god. <laughs> Which is very true. Fucking get them, Shaggy. Uh, yeah. So, they're walking now to the bear cave. But they never call it the bear cave. Did I mention there was a bear in this movie? I mentioned it a while ago, but I don't think I... <laughs> Leo just... Uh, Leo just face planted into the desk because he's so tired <laughs> of all the bullshit in this movie. <laughs> you know, you did mention that there was a bear in the movie in passing, and then <laughs> I was like, "Huh, weird. I guess I'll, I guess I'll keep an eye out for that." Forgot about the bear until you mentioned well, here's it again. The thing. They show the bear very briefly earlier on in the movie but because of all the other bullshit happening with like the gorilla and like the weird rednecks and like the sheriff and the manservant and the ghosts all the different ghosts there's so much happening that like i i forget every time that there's a bear in the movie yeah (laughs) i've watched this movie like three times in the past couple weeks and every time i'm like oh yeah there was a bear (laughs) like i forget every single time it's so weird also it doesn't it's not a very good looking bear it's a weirdly designed bear i can imagine i feel it it is brown it's not like a blue it's not blue like the gorilla is but it is weird like it it just looks particularly fluffy i don't know it doesn't quite track with what i'm used to a bear looking like especially from hanna-barbera um in any event they're walking to bear cave and they just stop the movie for like a minute for Shaggy and Scooby to talk about how hungry they are. An entire minute. An entire minute. I counted. It's a full 60 seconds. Sometimes you need um, that much time to complain about how hungry you are. I get it. I mean, look, I know they wanted to like pad this movie out a little bit um, for like commercial breaks and whatever. But also they really didn't need to yeah. <laughs> go that far into like random bullshit happening also this movie's 92 minutes long oh god it's a full hour and a half and you feel every minute of it i was Um, curious curious about that i was wondering if it was one of those like direct to dvd or direct to tv whatever that's just like barely an hour but no they like yeah i was expecting it to be like an hour maybe like an hour 10 hour 20 but no it's a full hour and a half it's full feature length (laughs) it's full feature length oh i hate that it's absurd um but now scooby stops by a bush to like pick some berries um scooby stops by a bush to take a shit (laughs) (laughs) they show it in graphic detail he gets he picks some berries and eats them and is like "Mm, this is good or whatever and Shaggy's like, now there's no time. Never mind the food now, Scoob. Which is, I feel, the most out of character thing Shaggy's done in this entire movie. Yeah, that's fair. Because Shaggy would never say, never mind food now. He would always be about the food. Yeah, Shaggy's like um, 100% down to clown at any moment. Yeah, especially when it comes to food. 
Um, but yeah, so the bear shows up um, and chases them into the cave. And there's also a ghost in the cave. Or no, there, there's the truck. That's where the truck comes in. The truck is remote control in the cave. And um, they get the truck back and they get rid of the remote control device on the car and it's fine and now they have the truck again <laughs> i'm so glad and they finally they get the last riddle and they find and they they go to where where the second to last bit of treasure is but the the skull ghost is there waiting for them and he springs a trap and they they get stuck in a little boat that rows out into the swamps and they're gonna drown in the boat or whatever while the ghost races off to like get the treasure and here's the one the first time in the movie that the boo brothers do something that impacts the plot (laughs) is they rescue scooby and shaggy and scrappy from the boat that's it and they uh they they get back to the mansion they uh find the ghost in like the main hall he pulls like there's there's the fireplace in the center and he pulls like a lever on it that does like a slot machine thing and it's weird that no one's done that before if the fireplace the fireplace is where all the treasure is but they don't know that but they do know that the fireplace has a giant lever and what looks to be slot machine screens on it that seems pretty so they obvious. Should probably put two and two together. <laughs> um. Anyway, the ghost, the skull ghost, then turns the gun <laughs> on Scooby, Shaggy, and Scrappy. Oh, good lord! He has a little pistol, but then all of the the treasure rushes out of the fireplace and buries him in gold and whatever. And then he dies. The, the gun is knocked out of his hand. And Shaggy picks it up for a split second and is like, what's going on here? And he's just holding a gun for like a split second. I have to see this image of Shaggy holding a gun. And they're like, why would a ghost need a gun? And all I can think is, why would Shaggy need a gun? Yeah, <laughs> Shaggy, no. <laughs> Put that gun down, Shag. Like, it's my Second Amendment right, Scoob. Nope. <laughs> um, but they unmask the ghost and they find out it's Sheriff Busby but then they turn around and there's Sheriff Busby at the door with the mustache and they're like wait what? Is it his fucking twin brother? It's his evil twin brother is, is the ghost it's his evil twin brother TJ who likes to dress up as sheriffs and impersonate cops and do all sorts of little crimes and whatever TJ said fuck blue lives <laughs> but it's just it's never even hinted at that this might be uh, not the real Sheriff Busby like there's no hint of it there's no allusion to it there's nothing it just comes right out of nowhere I can imagine (laughs) Uh, and then they're like oh we're finally rid of the ghosts and they hear like uh, the voice of Beauregard say oh yeah and then it goes to commercial and then it comes back from commercial and the movie's wrapping up (laughs) oh my god (laughs) so they give the boo brothers the mansion as payment for uh so, so they can haunt as long as they like and they head off to home because i guess they're done with their like little witch infestation uh at their place i guess yeah yeah and the the boo brothers ask them what are they gonna do with the treasure (laughs) they say they're gonna donate the treasure all of the treasure to the beauregard trust fund for orphans (laughs) which we just now figured out is a thing we just no they invent a charity for orphans for the blue brothers the blues brothers oh the boo brothers sorry (laughs) They're just oh, they're such characters. I don't know how I'm how I could have possibly messed that one up. Yeah, honestly, I'm ashamed of you. <laughs> and then they see uh, Colonel Beauregard, and they're like, "Oh, it's it's one, it's another like fa- it's Scooby doing a little goof or whatever." And Scooby's like, "That's not me. 
and they're like, what, it's a real ghost, what? and they, like, drive away, and then it's just, it just ends. <laughs> like, it just, and it ends as quickly as it began, like, just really abruptly and out of nowhere. What a horrible, horrible movie. It's such an anomaly of cinema, and it just baffles me on multiple levels, like, conceptually, from, like, a story perspective, the characters are weird, it's not very funny, except for, like, a few couple little spots where it is for me and me only. (laughs) (laughs) This movie was directly intended for Jesse as the audience. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. But it was made like a full ten years too early. Yeah. Because I was I would be born for another decade. Um Also, just a side note, the whole like the fact that Shaggy has a red shirt is like such an anomaly and like a weird thing in the franchise that every single DVD VHS box art for this movie has him in like the green in the iconic like green shirt and like the brown pants brown bell yeah. bells yeah like they never depict him with like a red shirt in any of like the the marketing material for these movies which i think is really interesting that is interesting it's fucking weird that, like they don't they don't bother uh i don't know it's it's such a bizarre movie uh <laughs> i don't know if we're I don't know if we're if we're rating these movies, um, but let's, I'm gonna sure, give let's this. Rate them. I'm gonna give this one a a two out of five. Escaped Circus Apes, <laughs> <laughs> or two out of five Family Jewels, which take your pick. Two out of five balls. <laughs> two out of five nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a real piece of work, and the anim- It's also really dark. And I don't mean, like, Th- tonally. I mean, like, v- visually. Yeah. It's, like, hard to see what's going on in a lot of shots. I'll, I'm trying to, like, edit, uh, like, still frames and whatever into, like, transparent, like, uh, like pictures of, like, just characters. And it's hard to do it because a lot of the characters are, like, dressed in black against, like, mostly black and dark blue backgrounds oh yeah especially since i'm assuming a lot of this happens at night so it's like the entire movie's set at night there's no part during the day um so it's like just constantly like visually dark it's just a kind of a pretty not good looking movie yeah that wouldn't surprise me at all it's a real it's a real piece of work but if this isn't your cup of tea there's always, on the same DVD, you can find the music video for the song When the Ghosts Go Boo, Call Scooby-Doo. <laughs> is that the song from The Witch earlier, or is it a different song? No, it's a different song, and it's very clearly written years after the fact, because it's very clearly, like, Scott Innes, who didn't start voicing Scooby and Shaggy until, like, the late 90s. Ah, I see. It's, like, very obviously him and not Casey Kasem and Don Messick. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, they definitely also... Also, I was watching a trailer for this movie, uh, earlier today. And they definitely use a lot of footage from Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island to kind of try and fool you into thinking this is a better-looking movie. Yeah, to, to trick the audience into thinking that the animation is any good at all. Yeah, and they, they also show, like... In the footage they use from Zombie Island, they use uh, footage of, like, Daphne, Freddy, and Velma, who are absent from the movie. That's really funny. They just, like, blur them out. (laughs) Just (laughs) censor bar over their faces. Don't worry about it. That's so funny. Like, they're in fucking witness protection. Yeah, (laughs) their voices are all fucked up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah they're just they're just like behind like a like a b- purple curtain or whatever and it's just their silhouette and they're like well you know i was uh, having a little adventure solving a mystery with scooby and shaggy not daphne it's next... just like jeepers jeepers <laughs> <laughs> Je- jeepers <laughs> <laughs> and i said well gang we need to split up and search for clues The girls and I will take upstairs. Shaggy and Scooby, you go find the flayed corpse of God. (laughs) 
<laughs> I knew you were gonna bust out that joke. Uh, so. <sighs> so that was Scooby Doo and the fucking Brew Brothers, I guess. So no Leo, need to watch like you... the film because we just, <laughs> God, gave you a play by play. Leah, I feel. Uh, I think you once told me that like after you record uh, an episode of Best Boys, I feel like you do most of the talking. So at the end of it, you're like really tired. And like need like a little rest or whatever. I feel fucking exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> I like finally get it. It's so the tiring. Was, it's like especially when like you're doing most of the heavy lifting, and I I really I really get how you feel now, man. It's like Ooh. you feel like socially exhausted because you have to monitor. I feel so drained. You have to like monitor what you say. Like you have to make sure it's entertaining. You have to like yeah keep a conversation feel... going. It's it's rough. It's real hard. Yeah, especially when I'm talking about a movie you've probably never seen. And never will see. <laughs> and never will see. And, oh, you're so... You're stronger than I, because I'm probably going to watch it again later. If I was to watch... I'm going to have to watch it again to edit the, the video version. Also, there will be a video version of this episode, like, condensed on our YouTube channel, so be on the lookout for that. Yeah, that'll be cool. Um, Yeah, so <laughs> you can see all the fun little things I'm talking about, uh... And, like, get a real feel for what what a real train disaster this movie is. <laughs> the, only re- that, the only way that I would ever watch this movie is if I was heavily under the influence. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like this movie could be a good date uh, drinking game. Yeah. Every time something like, <laughs> just real stupid happens, take a drink. <laughs> yeah, every time, like, they say one of the lines that I had to say <laughs> during this episode that made Leo just go, like, what? Why would you do that? Every time they say search me, take a take I a was going to say every time they say search me, <laughs> take a shot. Yeah, every time they uh say family jewels. Every time Farquhar just says every time Farquhar does one of his like little <laughs> That's how he laughs. What? <laughs> what were we watching and there was a drinking game where it was like whenever somebody said somebody's name you had to drink and our bottles were like gone within the first like five minutes Fuck, i don't remember you know what i'm talking about though right i think it was so, the last yeah. time you came to visit we were like watching some movie and i was like oh i wonder if <gasps> it was rockadoodle you're right and every yeah. time they said fucking chanticleer you had to drink out like we didn't have a whole lot of booze at my house. Our bottles were empty within the first five minutes of this movie. <laughs> we ran out of alcohol immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Mere moments from the start of the movie. They said Chanticleer so much. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I forgot about that. I forgot I saw that movie. Yeah, me too. <laughs> You know what? I remember that Holy we kind of liked it, though. Like, we were okay with it. Yeah, it's not that bad. Like, it's dumb as rocks, but, like, it's cute and it's whatever. Yeah, it's not, like... The animation's It's, good. like, harmless. I wouldn't necessarily yeah. recommend it, but it's whatever. Mm-hmm. It's definitely fun to watch with, like, your friend. I wouldn't recommend it if oh, you're definitely. by yourself. Unless you're, like, really fucking stoned or something. This is unrelated. We could cut this, but I was looking at, um... A... We're gonna have to cut so much of this to make it digestible. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm not even remotely like <laughs> pressed about it. I was looking at yeah. this colored pencil and it's yellow, mm-hmm. and it was rolled away, and I guess it was saying where it was made. Cause I was like, "Damn, why this yellow color called Czech Republic?" <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, they're Billy Bob Scroggins. <laughs> I was also that's an interesting name Scrubs. yeah that's horrible yeah like I went to elementary school with a guy whose last name was Scruggs and I've definitely like heard of other like redneck types with the surname Scruggs but heard I've of... never heard us a... have you heard of Joe I've never heard Scruggs? of a Scroggins what Joe Scruggs 
Joe Sc- I don't know if I've ever heard of Joe Scruggs. Joe Scruggs is... I, like, want to look it up just in case I'm getting his name wrong because it is just, like, such a silly name. Fuck. Okay, yeah, that is him. Joe Scruggs was, like, my entire childhood. He was a, like, he's a singer and, like, children's entertainer. And he did, uh, it says he's a retired American singer-songwriter, widely acclaimed for his children's and folk music output. Blah, blah, blah. He did, he made television appearances on, like, Barney and, like, also the David Letterman show. He's still alive. That's good. But um, I'm going to look through... I'm going to look through some of these uh, some of these songs. So there's one called Goo Goo Gaga. Uh-huh. Deep in the Jungle. Refrigerator Picture. That's my favorite one. Aww. Belly Button. <laughs> in the... F- Me fucking too. In the Freezer. Ah, fuck. Oh! Oh, by the way, that's a good one, too. We can cut all of this, but yeah, Jug- Joe Scruggs exists. Oh fuck, Bahamas and pajamas. That's a nope. that's a fucking bop. He sings with some uh, parrot puppets. Oh, that's fun. There's like a couple of like animated shorts to go along with the songs, and they're like silly, but they're they're good. I enjoy Joe Scruggs. So how are we gonna outro? Excellent question. Um, hmm. Well, bye. <laughs> <laughs> See you, fuckers. Okay, uh, that concludes. I'm so tired. <laughs> that concludes <laughs> our inaugural episode of Best Boys Deep Dive, uh, and our episode, our take on Scooby Doo meets the Boo Brothers. If you want to, uh keep up with more of what we're doing uh you can subscribe to the media cage on youtube and you can uh check out our other podcast which is just called best boys on the same youtube channel it's on also on the media cage channel yes (laughs) uh and uh there will be a video as i said earlier there will be a video uh version of this video condensed video version uh uh on youtube at some point i don't know that's fair yeah <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll try and like bang the editing out on this one quick so i can get to yeah. the video version like sooner rather than later is there anything else we need to plug or so you can find us on twitter and instagram i am uh, at gouache boy gouache underscore boy on twitter g-o-u-a-c-h-e and i am at gouache boy with a period in between the two words on instagram um jesse where can we find you oh you're our instagram too yeah that's true g boydles g dot b-o-y-d-l-e-s mm-hmm. and you can find me on instagram at grinch fat and on twitter at i'm okay at things because brand synergy is a myth <laughs> Because Brand Synergy, because what is, what's Brand Synergy? I've never heard of her. So, um, <laughs> you can look forward to us cranking out more episodes of this. We're going to be talking about some of the other stuff that we're interested in. Um, some more serious than others, and we're going to start mm-hmm. uh, probably just getting back into Best Boys. I know we said that we were going to take a break from it, but I have some shit to do, and I want to get Tyler on as a guest, and we have... Uh, friend of the show that we want to bring on as well so we can uh start preparing for that and start working on those episodes do we know what the next episode of deep dive is supposed to be about um i feel like you have quite a few things i have quite a few i have so many things so uh we can either for the next episode do the land before time two or we can do uh uh, experiments from Lilo and Stitch, the game where you have to tell me what you think the experiment can do. For an entire episode? There's there's a lot of... I'm, no, we're not doing that for an entire episode. That would be unlistenable. Really? No, that would suck. That would be good for, like, a segment, not an entire episode. Oh my god. Really? Okay. 
That would be fucking unusable audio. It's like, what do you think this one does? I don't fucking know. It's been 400 fucking experiments. I'm not doing this. I quit. Okay. To clarify, I'm not doing all 627 of them. I'm doing, like, only the ones that actually showed up in the show. If, which is significantly less. It's, like, maybe 50. If we were to do an episode about Lilo and Stitch as an IP, that would be acceptable. But we're not doing mm. that game for an entire hour and a half long episode. Okay. I will wring okay. your fucking neck. <laughs> So get ready for our next episode on Land Before Time 2, The Great Valley Adventure. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Which will be much simpler to do anyway. Yeah, good God. <laughs> yeah. I know I've seen that one. I'll have to look up look it up. Yeah, it's it's cute. It's dumb but cute. Lamb um, Lamb before time. <laughs> Lamb before nine. Mm-hmm. Well, that's going to do it for us today, folks. Thank you so much for listening to our uh, pilot episode of Best Boys Deep Dive. We will be back whenever we feel like making a new episode. I'm not going to... Whenever... Yeah, whenever we feel like... I'm not going to even bother with the schedule. We have one listener. Yeah, whenever we feel like it. God. I'm so tired. I know. (laughs) How do you not kill yourself after, like, every episode? I have to take a break from talking to you for, like, hours after we record. No, that's fair. Oh, my God. I feel so drained. I have plans with friends after this. I'm gonna, like, sit and do nothing for, like, 45 oh. minutes. Oh, my God. I won't be able to edit this for, like, a, at least at least 24 hours oh yeah that's fair i wasn't expecting you to uh, i'm gonna s- <laughs> i'm gonna see if audition is shitting itself yet no it looks good we've been recording for two and a half hours yeah that's what it's saying online too oh my god